This is wonderful. Thank you so much for all being here. Um, I feel very privileged to be in this position, um, sitting down. We're, we're calling it a virtual roundtable, is that what it is? Um, yes. My name is Lisa Kennedy, and I have the privilege of uh, interviewing, I think interviewing, chatting, let's call it a blather, um, with the amazing team behind The Difference Between Us. Um, Etienne, thank you very much for uh, making this all possible. Um, hello to everybody. Um, you're all looking splendid. And you're... Hello. And you're, we're, we're saying we're sharing lots of similar backgrounds. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if we, we're sh uh, sharing similar backgrounds in terms of our creative endeav endeavours. I'm sure we'll get there. Um, but if, we, if we're going to deep dive in, um, Etienne, can I come to you first very quickly, just to give us um, a very quick synopsis of the, the story of the film, if um, anyone's been under a rock and not discovered your wonderful creation just yet. So yeah, The Difference Between Us is a film uh, that follows a character called Alex, who has lived all his entire life in the secret highlands of Scotland. And for the first time, he moves uh, uh, to Scotland, to Glasgow, to join university. And he has to kind of come out of his protective bubble to sort of deal with what's like to be a black man in the modern world. And kind of like he has a ratio between uh, Alex and... Um, Paul, who are Michael and Laura in the movie, and their relationship is sort of tried, but they all come out, you know, to have learned some stuff from uh, from the experience. So yeah, that's a little bit of what I could say without having to give so much away, you know. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about this film because it's quite a personal film as well. I feel like I wanted to put myself as well in the film and also be open to other lived experiences of different people in Scotland uh, to be played by these characters. So yeah. Wonderful. You've got that nailed, that um that, that elevator pitch for sure. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um can I come to yourself, Alex, first? What drew you to this project? Um, did you already have a, a relationship with Etienne in terms of working together creatively to to make you want to be part of this wonderful project? No, so I was just very fortunate that I found out about it online. I saw the casting call go up and applied for it. And I was very grateful to hear back and then get brought on because it's just been like a dream to work on. It's been so much fun from start to finish. Um, and Etienne's been amazing to work with. Just very passionate, got a great vision. So it basically was just all luck that I managed to get involved with it. Wonderful. And what about you say of Paul? What drew you to this project? Uh, well, I, unlike Alex, was not so on the ball and I ended up missing the casting call. But my friend who ended up being our sound man on this, Brian, was like, hey, I think you should check out this uh, casting call quickly before it finishes. I was like, oh, my goodness, I best apply to this. And as soon as I caught a glimpse of the script and the character, I was like, oh, this is... a." Um, this is very interesting, very different character. The character had a lot of similarities, I think, to myself in certain regards. And it was with that, that I thought, oh, I think there's a lot of room to play and create something very unique here. Awesome. Junior, can I come to you? What about yourself? What drew you to this project? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one because it's very different from Alex and Paul. So with myself, I didn't even know about the cast and about this. It was actually through a mutual friend. I think Etienne was looking for a black actor uh, for some time. I really couldn't get through um, to, to anyone to fill the, the, the position, the role. So it came through a mutual friend who said, look, I know this guy who's looking for an actor. Should I put you forward? I can exchange, you know, we exchanged sort of details and um, and it wasn't really until I read the script um, where I actually discovered I could relate a lot of aspects of this character, Alex, to my life because this is basically um, a lot of the stuff that I've lived through. So very, very intriguing storyline, very um, good writing. Uh, the plot was fantastic and um, I could relate to it. So it was tick, tick, tick. Uh, we got together, uh, we talked about the film, I met up with Etienne, uh, we talked about um, how it would work out, and also I'd previously worked with Alex before, as well as um, um, uh, Craig, uh, who plays Pete in the film. So it was, a sort of, it was always mutual friends, uh, sort of having that familiar, uh, 
familiarity and uh, get together was just fantastic and working on this project. It's, uh, it's been great. Wonderful. And Louise, what, what is your um, role in terms of this project and how did you get involved? I am the director of photography and my involvement really was uh, just, or oh, just pure luck, I guess. I mean, uh, we met. We were doing. We were doing some some project. That, it was that for BBC, yes, and I don't remember. But uh, I mean, we were just doing a, an interview about Etienne. Uh, I think it was for BBC or social or something like that. Um, I was just there really to help out. But then I I ended up lighting the whole interview just because I'm keen on those things. So then he said like, "Whoa, you did an amazing job." And as, as a joke, he, he then said, like, you should be the DOP in my next film. And and then, yeah, well, I sent my show reel and stuff like that. Eventually, that actually then got serious. And then he sent me a script. And then I really liked the script. And then he really liked my reel and stuff. So we had a conversation. And the thing is, the moment I met Etienne after after that shoot, uh, that I got to know him a little bit, it's like, I don't know, I felt like I had a relationship with him for, like, ever you know and that really uh was just flowing and stuff and it was it was it was just great i mean it's uh, the energy out of that man is just incredible and and yeah i think it was both ways i mean we really felt it and and we felt it was i mean and that was that was gonna be my my first feature film and and so it was quite important for for me as well so so yeah and yeah and i think we're gonna carry on working together for quite some time Awesome. I mean, I have to echo what you said there about Etienne's um, passion and energy. The, it literally is palpable because I also interviewed Etienne online and we hadn't met until very recently. And literally the minute I met you, Etienne, I just got that passion, that drive, that energy, that positivity. Yeah. It's 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 quite hard to ignore and not be fueled by it for sure, like when you're in your yeah. company. So I can understand why everybody would want to be part of a project with you. I mean, I'm grateful. I mean, I'm grateful. And I think for me, I'm always trying to follow instinct. Like when I saw Alexis, um, who plays Laura in the film, uh, herself tape and I saw uh, uh, Paul and Junior, uh, it was just, uh, it, it, there's just the feeling, it's the gut. I get the first impression when I see somebody send me something. And right there, I know I'm going to work with this person, you know, and even with uh, Lewis as well, when we met, we even talked about where we come from, our culture, the kind of food we like, and we already we were comfortable. And Lewis saw he, the first draft of the script before it was polished up properly. So he gave me some ideas on what we could change, what could be possible, had, uh, had a, a cool coffee and chatted for quite some time. And yeah, everything has just been natural. I think I'm always trying to... Um, this energy, I think, I don't know. I, I just feel like you have to keep the energy up if you want to push through something that is as tough as making a film. And uh, I'm also grateful to, the, to all these guys who are involved here and other people who are not on this call who played a huge role. Because they say you can make a film, but it takes a whole crew and team to make a film. It's not just the director. It's going to be a DOP, actors, lighting, all these people are doing different little you know elements to sort of add to the big picture of what you're all trying to achieve. I mean, we're talking here in June uh, 2023, but in terms of the timeline of making this film from the, the, the conception of the idea to now, like how long has it been in terms of that first very thought of I'm going to make a film and I know what it's going to be about? It's been 24 months. That's been two years. So I've been working nonstop for two years. So my journey has always been I go to Comic-Con, sell my independent comic book and invest my money back in the film. So I've been... For the last two years been just on it from writing planning meeting everybody shooting post-production going to location in lewis meeting the actors filming editing sound design in manchester coming to the color grading i've not had a holiday everybody's been going on holiday i feel like i need to do something you know but i mean the film is about to come out and i think i'll have time to rest before i start something else and i think this is our life uh you have to try and enjoy every process been 24 months but I feel like I've been enjoying every every bit of it. And I'm like, sometimes I look back, I'm like, wow, it's been two years, you know, doing this. And uh, um, yeah, it's such a long time, but I've 
tried to make sure that everything I get involved in, I want to keep my energy up and I want to enjoy working with everybody because you only got one life to live and you want to do, you don't want to spend the, all these 24 months just living a horrible life, working on something you don't know excited about. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's been that time. It's, it feels like forever, isn't it? <laughs> Love it. And in terms of um, taking you back for a second, Alex, to that first day on set, can you recall what scene you were shooting how it felt what were the nerves like give us a sense of what that day was like well first of all it was ideal for me because I looked at the call sheet and I was like oh the location's a two minute walk from my flat so that was a nice surprise because especially as someone that doesn't drive normally you look at the call sheet and you're like oh I need to get three buses to get there and it'll take me two days um so that was great and I don't want to spoil what we were filming that day but I would say maybe slightly thrown in the deep end for the first day of filming but it was great it was a lovely day and I think just as soon as uh, we've spoken about this before as um the cast like I think we all felt a sense of when we went onto the set, we were like, oh, this feels really good. This feels really exciting because it's your first time meeting everyone. As you say, like the nerves are always kind of higher on the first day, but just it was a great sense of just a good team from the get go, which was lovely. Amazing. And Paul, in terms of that collaboration as a team, because it, like as Ian was saying, it does take a village. Um, what was it like on set in terms of creative collaboration? Was everyone, you know, often up their ideas to, to basically make every single part of this film the best it could be? Oh, it was a creative idea soup. It was lots, <laughs> Love it. lots of ideas flying around from, from day one. Uh, I, I recall actually my first day meeting Etienne and Lewis for the first time, walking in and just thinking, wow, we've got this space to shoot in. This is a really cool place. I just had a really good feeling from the get-go. And then there would be scenes we would be shooting. We'd talk about uh, certain ideas, what we could do. What if, what if we try this and this or that? I don't want to give away too much. There's a couple of very crazy scenes where we had to get it right uh, with very little room for error. And it was there was a lot of pressure, but it was a lot of fun at the same time as well. And I wouldn't have changed it for anything. <laughs> Love it, love it. I love how everyone's sworn to secrecy. I'm loving it. I mean, you're just making me want to see this film even more. <laughs> um, Junior, in terms of your um, preparation for the film, um, what preparation did you do in advance? Or if any, I mean, I'm guessing obviously it's about, you know, getting to, to learn your lines and knowing the script and knowing the, the, the story inside out. But um, as, as part of this film, did you have any particular um, preparation? In terms of preparation, I always approach every project uh, the same in terms of my mindset. I try to just go beyond the lines and <clears throat> try to understand the character. Who is Alex? What is Alex all about? You know, look at the background. So um, there's a term um, um, that's commonly utilized um, in training environments when you're um, um, when you go to um, an acting school. And it's called um, before the scene. So from the first page onwards, I tend to focus on what happens, bef what what's happened before, and then apply it going into that scene. So it's the same sort of concept that I apply in terms of trying to understand who is Alex, what's his background, how does it fit into this new world. As Etienne explained in the um, in the introduction, he said Alex is a character who's been in a protected bubble almost his whole life. Now he has to come to terms um, about regarding the reality of what it actually means to be black in this new world and how that's going to affect him. How does he then react to that? So I tend to sort of focus on um, the character and everything being new and bringing that to life in addition to the reflection of my life as well and you know relating to the character because it's very difficult for you to assess something if you can't relate to it so you need you need to be able to relate to it so that you can pour all of that energy into the performance but for me it didn't feel like a, it didn't feel like a performance it felt like um, it was real and um, that was a true display of some aspects of what I've, I've been through so and it was really cool um 
So to bring that character to life, to, as you say, collaborate with everybody else, the ideas were flowing. And it was just so easy uh, with everyone. Um, that, that was what was fantastic about this cast and crew. It was just so easy to work with everyone. It felt more like a family than anything. You know, it's, it's uh, um, from day one and made the process a lot easier in terms of the preparation. Um, also, having a photographic memory really helps. <laughs> Ah, tricks of the and trade. The line. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> His <laughs> secrets <devil>. revealed. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Um, and Lewis, I guess, you know, for anyone who's unfamiliar about the kind of work that you do, um, I guess that's, it's an ongoing process even when filming is finished? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, after finishing then, I was, of course, involved in the, uh, the colour grades, which is, where we finesse what we shot and pretty much getting all the all, all the colors right and then get the, the tonality that we I mean because when you when you shoot a film basically uh you should okay in this case a digital file but then it's in its uh raw format which basically it's very washed out and no colors no nothing and then you can need to add those kind of things later on to to be able to manipulate it properly so that's a process that takes several days um, that you have to do with specialist colors, which is uh, top currents, which is just fantastic from artist production. Um, and yeah, so it's been, it's been, I mean, Etienne and I were uh, joining Tom for, for the sessions and it was just, which is great just to, to try to, to find our characters, see what we can do to enhance performance in different uh, stages uh, and, and isolate them when we need to and, and, and do those kind of things uh, to not not to make it look nice but to make it right for the movie um, and that's and that's the key thing of that creative process as well. Wonderful. In terms of um, a lasting takeaway from your experience of being part of this project, I mean I, I say that as if it's over, it's, I mean it feels like it's just beginning but, and beginning. it was yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> um but just that the creative process of being on set and then you know post-production um I, like I'll come to you 18 first like um, I mean it's probably an impossible question but um in terms of a lasting takeaway personally for you thus far what are you taking with you from this experience I think it's um it was a learning experience, I think, for me, because obviously this is my debut film and I was doing music videos and documentaries. So there's so many things that I, I saw that I could have done better that I, I'm going to improve next time. And there's really heated conversations that I'm going to be having with Louis on the next project and we're going to plan earlier and we're going to find proper locations uh, where we can shoot and have more sort of. Uh, creative power of the location for lighting and things that we want to do so it was um i've learned so much i met some really cool people and I learned how to sort of communicate with actors and you know brock the scenes and you know these things that are even that fear as a director you know everybody's looking at you like dude what are we doing next like even getting off that fear it's every morning i woke up you know me and louis we we're preparing the set and everybody's coming and they're like okay so what are we doing today so um, just being able to get off that fear, uh, it's something that I, I learned from this and knowing that this, uh, I'm super ambitious. So I've got, you know, big plans of what to come and I know where I'm going to improve and be better. And I think with the collaboration with these cool people and know um, the next project from this, obviously I'm excited about this, but even what we're going to do after that uh, and in the future is going to be, you know, this really will play it's like a foundation. It's a great foundation of what's to come. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. I'm back. Yeah. I'm back. Um, Alex, in terms of um, audience takeaway, what do you hope or expect audiences to take away from seeing this film oh that's an interesting question um I feel like I just want the audience to get a good sense of who each of the characters are I feel like a big message throughout the film is kind of identity and finding yourself and I just want the audience to kind of 
root for the characters throughout and there's some really nice wholesome moments in it that I just want them to enjoy and just like feel like they know these people because I think the characters are so well written that they do feel like very relatable a bit like what Junior was saying about preparing for the role and how he could relate to his character I think there's aspects to various different people's lives throughout it that I hope that members of the audience can each find something to identify with it um, but I'm excited for everyone to see it it's going to be great absolutely and Paul um you know many many highlights I'm sure um for you personally were there any particular hurdles or challenges that you overcame during this whole process oh one comes to mind straight away uh, well a couple really but there's one scene I have still not seen a piece of this scene it is still a complete mystery to me. But there is one take where I got taken aside and I got basically told, look, time is a bit of the essence here. We've got a lot. To, there's a lot to happen in this scene. It's ideal if we get this in one go, uh, but we're going to give you time to prepare. So we've got about an hour or so. Go to a space and prepare and we're going to set up with the camera and figure out what we're doing on this end so I went away um, in my own little corner and I prepared I, I like to use for certain things a method called substitution and I essentially create a different completely separate story in my head uh, in this case I kind of needed something to fuel a very negative emotion and I basically create this story and I had that playing throughout my head as I'm saying the lines uh, the two stories are not linked the story in my head's not linked to the film at all and I used that essentially as fuel to burn throughout the whole scene so we went in and I remember before we called action there was like a palpable tension in the <laughs> in the area and then we called action I took a moment and I just went in and the scene I I was very happy because I think I hit all the things that needed to be hit in the scene, but I have not seen it myself. But I'm I'm very that's the scene I'm most excited to see when we actually sit down and see it at the premiere because it was oh I remember it was just oh when we called cut there was such a relief <laughs> because I I managed to get this whole scene done. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love getting that insight into this world because I guess like for you, um, you know, at this stage where the film's just about to come out, um, this behind the scenes, like pulling back the curtain almost is, I think it's like, it gets people more intrigued in terms of like seeing a film and understanding that creative process uh, and the preparation that you do before the project, but also during um, to get yourself in the right headspace as an actor or performer or even uh, any creative involved in the project. Junior, for you, um, taking you back again for, for a moment, um, do you have a particular moment or day or, or, or you know, just time while you were filming that you thought um, that, you'd that you'd turned a corner and, and what, what did that, how did that come across for you? Like, was there a moment where you thought something's clicked or something's changed or, you know, just that, that kind of, not hard, it doesn't necessarily need to be a hurdle, but I just wonder if there was any kind of light bulb moments for want of a, a better phrase. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. That's a really good question. Um, and the interesting thing about that question is, I think going into the film, um, this is me setting the scene, going into the film, you know, we're excited about it, it's day one, and then you soon realise, actually, hold on, this is your first feature film, you're the lead in this, along with um, along with the other actors, there's a lot of pressure riding on you to deliver. Now, it's, it's going to be either sink or swim, because there's certain elements where the performance really has to shine through, and um, so that's a lot of pressure to deal with, so I think... If anything, what I found, it pushed me to levels that I was capable of, but hadn't been pushed to in the past. So I was able to see different sides um, and, you know, go to places in terms of my performance where I had really needed to in the past because there wasn't an expectation for it. So that was a good realization. I was just seeing um, my capability and potential being on full display to what I can actually do. And it's almost that 
going back to your point of that light bulb moment when it clicks and think, hold on, this could be actually be the beginning of something wonderful. Let's see how far we can take this thing. And going back to Atien's um, passion, his pursuit, I mean, it's, everyone knows his, his relentless. I don't know how it does it. You know, maybe he runs on coffee. We don't know whatever he has for breakfast. I want some of that. <laughs> no, he runs on cold showers every morning. That's, cold sh- that's the one, cold showers. Uh, if there's an alternative, I'm going to opt for that. But just having that passion and, and seeing that it almost fuels me to also apply the same sort of effort and like determination in anything that I do. And that's almost the sort of defining moment whilst working on the film. Actually, no, this we could go places with this film. We could actually um, do quite uh, some amazing things here. So it's just the beginning of something wonderful. As Etienne's saying, as everybody's saying, it's, um, it's like, watch this space. We're coming. Love it. Love it. Um, okay, so I'm going to put you all on the spot here for a second, but if you could pick one word that best describes this film, what would it be? Lewis, I'm looking at you first. Passion. Alex? I'll leave it, I'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You, you, you look so quietly confident there. I was like, I'm going in. We're going in. You've got it. I know. I'm going to say now that you stole my word. <laughs> Because <laughs> I love it, it sums it up. Um, yeah, I think what really speaks about this film is just the passion behind it. So in a similar motive, I'm going to say drive, mainly just Etienne's drive for the film. <laughs> Paul, how would you best describe the film in one word? Uh, oh, I've had such little time to think about it, but... Um... <laughs> I think thinking about it, um, I think a lot of the problems that happen in the film occur because of misjudgment. Um, so that will be my word. I would say misjudgment. A lot of the problems in the film would be solved, I think, if people um, didn't make these quick um, assumptions about one another uh, no matter, even if they're light or if they're deep um, into one's soul. And I think, uh, obviously, there wouldn't be a film if we didn't have the problem, so I'm glad they're there. <laughs> but I think as a sum up, I would say, yeah, misjudgment. Interesting. Junior, you've had a bit more time to think about this. I have, I have. So <laughs> many adverbs, so many verbs, so many adjectives. What can I... I haven't had some time. I was just thinking, like, what does this film actually consist of? Because if you think about it, it's got almost everything. It's got love, emotion. It's got, as Paul mentioned, judgment, hate, some some would argue, uh, crime, violence. So it brings out all these different emotions and all these different aspects to make for an absolutely fantastic and compelling story. And for that reason, my word is going to be stupendous. That's a stupendous word. <laughs> stupendous. I like that. Stupendous I've word. never heard that one before, but yeah, that's great. I know, I, know what it, I, know, I know what it means, I can tell. But yeah, I just never heard it before in a sentence. So great. Well, that was not a sentence, but yeah, great. Etienne, you look like you were agreeing with all of those words. Um, I wondered if you can sum up in one word what this has meant to you make, being able to make this film. freeing that's what I would say freeing because there's bits of myself that is in there that I've been able to address in this film that have made me become more free because uh, before I don't know if you guys all know I, I grew up with a stepmom uh, so I so adopted after my real biological parents died so I, I, I grew up sort of distancing myself from her, not realizing that even if someone is not your biological parent, they can still love you. So doing this film and dealing with these issues, uh, sometimes I was sh- shooting some scenes and I'm like, oh, this is replaying. And just working with you guys had has freed me. It's really freeing. Just feel, I feel like now I'm having this conversation with my, my stepmom and I'm a free person and I'm now ready to you know attack the world and be myself and be free. Just, just be free. That's it. 
So thank you. Wow, that's so powerful. That is so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing such beautiful words. And it, it, it you know, it makes um it certainly makes me want to watch this film even more. I'm just getting this insight. Um, so we are in June 2023 and we're very close to the film being released. What are the preparations looking like? What's happening right now? Is everyone getting their best glad drags looked out for the premieres and the red carpets and all the awards that are going to come your way? Is that is that how it's all going down at the moment? <laughs> oh, well, I'm uh, getting my tuxedo ready. You know, I'm looking yes. at options. I went for, you know... <laughs> You know, from you know, check ups. I've tried a few, you know, and uh, I've got a stylist to help help me choose something really good for the night. And uh, obviously, that's a, a big moment for me and for everybody. And also with preparations, uh, we've tested the film with the cinema. Uh, it sounds good. I can't wait for you guys to see it with a five point one mix for the cinema. You're gonna hear everything and. You know, it's crazy because Lewis has worked on it as a color grader, so he's not seen the whole mix. And you guys just came to film, so you've not heard the sound and the music and the grading. It just, I cannot wait. So the preparation, all oh, that's been tested and good to go. And the red carpet is being really prepared and the photographers and, you know, the after party, all the things. And there will be an opening performance from Jerry Jane, who did the soundtrack for the film. So you guys, uh, I'm excited about that uh, for you guys to see him perform for the first time, uh, the whole song. And yeah, the preparation are great. I'm very excited to just finally have this out. Absolutely. It's all very exciting. After all your hard work, you know, the blood, sweat and tears that's gone into this project, it'll be nice to for you all to, to be together. Um, and to let loose as well and uh, just celebrate what you've achieved together because it's no mean feat for sure. Yes, definitely. And guys, feel free to unmute yourself and say whatever, you know, I we got me to an end. So uh, yeah, we're, we're, I'm excited to meet Junior again. Alex, Louis, everybody involved. It's almost, I think it's 150 people coming on the night, so it's going to be wild. Yeah, there'll be yeah, such there a buzz so many about people. It. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, carry on. No, there are so many people that cannot be in this podcast that that just really made a difference uh, mm. for this film. We have Brian McIntyre, um, the, mm. everybody really. I mean, here on my team, uh, Gordon, um, everyone really. I mean, it's just uh, Craig that is not here. Um, every, I'm, I'm gonna forget. I don't know how many names, but everyone just just big tall native just pushing forward. You know, that's uh, that was just amazing. Like we had nothing but just pure passion and everybody just uh driving this this car forward and that was great i'm so excited for everyone to finally see the full film because the reaction to the the trailer itself has been i've i've shown it to people and they're like wow oh my goodness this is this looks incredible like when, when is that then they always ask me when is this out because they, they obviously it strikes a chord with them and that's actually i I can't wait to see that. It's just everything from the the music to the the cinematography and just the the little snippets that we've got. So I I, I can't wait personally for everyone. So when that pays off and everyone gets to see that. Also for these sort of events, I like to uh, dress somewhat uh, outlandishly, and I I my premier outfit tends will not disappoint. Let's put it that way. It we're all going to be outshined at this rate. We're, we're all going to be outshined. It's eight has got a stylist for crying out loud. I feel like I need to step up my game. You need to up your game, Junior. <laughs> I know. I mean, Paul's been talking about his outfit since yeah. the day we wrapped, pretty much. So the expectations are very high for it, Paul. <laughs> I'm feeling oh, is, no. it, is it Met Gala vibes, Paul? I. <laughs> <laughs> um, somewhat, somewhat, oh, a bit, a bit it. more budgeted, a bit more budgeted than loving it, Met Gala, it. but, but yeah, budget Met Gala. That's what I'm going for. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then just for all of you to know, dress properly because my mum is coming over and he's <laughs> traveling, he's traveling 17,000 miles to be wow. here that day. So yeah, wow. so she's going to be here. Everyone needs to be on point. We all need yes. to be on point. Yeah, no hey, I'm boring your stylist. 
<laughs> Lisa, you're invited as well if you're free on the 14th. Lisa, you have to be there. Seat. Oh, you have to be you there. You have a reserved seat as well. So if you're free. Oh, absolutely. Man. Words, I'll need to get the outfit looked out right now. My Met one, Gala. thank you so much. Met Gala vibes. I yeah. was born for this. Born for this. <laughs> Just um, before you all go on, I'm so thankful for your time. I'm so appreciative of your time and your energy. Um, I'm just interested to get a note on um, filmmaking in Scotland, what that landscape looks like, what it's going to look like going ahead, um, and what it means to you all in terms of being able to make a film here in Scotland and, and premiere it here in Scotland. Etienne, we'll start with you. I think this all this 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 notional idea that you have to go to Hollywood to, to make these films. I mean, I went to LA, I went to Atlanta, made a few producers. I mean, the the, the industry is already congested. People are already there's a lot of people trying to get into the film and everything. And I think in Scotland, everything is fresh. You could even big Hollywood films are coming to shoot here, so they they can see the potential of the country. You know, the uh, exterior photography on how you know the look of the city and the history. Everybody loves Scotland. So um, just kind of looking at how the industry is growing from Scottish filmmakers to actors, the way they have a community and they work together, they support each other. It's not about the money. It's not about how much you pay me to come and shoot something for you. It's what we're trying to create. And I've seen Lewis is always on the go. Junie's always have something going on. Alex and Paul, everybody, I'm just seeing everybody's creating, creating, creating. And I feel like right now scotland is growing and i know the future is bright and honestly um i never i never think about hollywood anymore i think we can create our own thing right here and send the movies to the world and and show them so i'm super driven to do that and i'll keep my studio here i can have studios other parts of the world when the studio grows but my base will always be scotland because scotland is home so um yeah i'm just I'm, I'm certainly infused by um the fact that this has been shot in Scotland um, we have such a creative collaborative team and it sounds like you know, there's a village behind this film like we were saying of people here in Scotland working I mean it's really especially I know we keep saying it but post pandemic is encouraging to know that there is work and things happening in Scotland um, creatively um, so I'm just interested to know what your perspective is on you know in terms of the the work um, and the world of film in Scotland, whether that's something that um, you're also enthused by after working on this really great project. Um, Alex, you were saying that you um, lived close by to the first location for the, the shoot, so that must have been <laughs> just refreshing that you don't have to travel far for work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's definitely a bonus, but um, it's, it's just such a lovely, I think kind of echoing on the idea of like the whole cast and crew turning into a family by the end of shooting. Like it was just nice people that were very driven and back to this idea of passion. It feels like the Scottish industry is driven by people that just love what they do. And as we're saying, it's not necessarily a money thing. It's just, you want to create something, you want to do it all together. There is that great sense of community. It's just a really nice industry to be a part of. And I think, because it has that sense where you might already know people like for instance junior and i having worked on a short film together before this that's always nice it's nice to build relationships with people and get the chance to work with them again which you might not get if it was um maybe somewhere like london you might not cross paths as much i just think the scottish industry is going to continue to grow and it's a really nice journey to be a part of i mean we're, we're natural storytellers here in scotland um and the, the kind of stories that we want to tell. Um, Junior, moving forward for you in terms of your career, um, what are you most excited about, about working here in Scotland and part of the, the film industry in Scotland? I think for me, the biggest thing is just um, putting Scotland on the map in terms of representation. Um, because I think most of the time, a lot of people look at, um, for example, if it's Hollywood or whatever the case may be, and it's, for me, it's not necessarily about how much you have, it's about what you do with how much you have and the impact that it has. So for such a film, the platform that it's got, the you know, the um the way it's been received um is a you know um uh, is a positive thing and moving forward and you know, creating a space for people to look at Scotland in that light to say, actually, 
this is fantastic, you know, in our very own city, you know, we've got a really good successful film, it's doing really well, and having that representation from that Scottish perspective is a really cool thing. And so for me, moving forward, it's just if we can do a, a lot more of that um, with, you know, projects moving forward, it'll be fantastic to see. Um, and it's an industry that's growing in Scotland. You know, the studio's being built. There's um, a lot of interest from external parties and, you know, other countries that are coming into film, as Aion was, Aion was saying. So it's the, the sky's the limit. And that's exciting to me because it's a, it's a really cool challenge, isn't it? You know, what can we do in Scotland? How can we um, in, increase the, the capability of filmmaking in Scotland and the creative aspects, the collaboration, the opportunities? You know, how can we do more of that? So it's a nice challenge and it's, it's exciting to be a part of that almost. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Paul, well, what's your take on it your perspective? I think in Scotland, the film industry there's been a lot of missed opportunities in the past i think scotland's not been used as well as it could be i think certain uh, creative choices have been a bit uh, poor and whatnot with scotland but i think that's starting to turn around and it's because of people like our dear etienne putting together films of this quality and putting it together for everyone to see and i know there's i know several other filmmakers are working hard to try and get their films made and put it out their features and shorts alike and i think that if we keep going this way with studios being built big names coming here big studios coming here as well though they will have a thriving independent and major uh Scottish film scene um, and I think we're on the road to that uh, now because of wonderful filmmakers like Etienne yeah, yeah. Lewis what would your um, advice be to anybody you know someone maybe watching this listening to this at this moment um, and wants to be part of which, which is obviously a hugely collaborative creative um, scene what would your advice be to somebody who wants to Advice, advice for me. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> um, right, I don't know. I, listen, um, this is my first feature film. Uh, hopefully, first of many, many. Um, almost forty years old. Um, it's never too late, you know. Um, you need to start somewhere. It's you just need to keep trying, get the foot in the door, do things that you like, meet people that are just like you or even more passionate than you, so you can learn from others and. Just, yeah, just keep going, you know. That's what you have to do, I guess. Uh, some people will say, oh, no, you know, it's difficult. I mean, stop making excuses. Just go and make a film. You can make a film with your phone if you want to. So, I mean, just go and do it. That's it. Then you will have some visibility, I'm sure. You have free platforms. You have YouTube. You have Vimeo. You can put your stuff anywhere. I mean, someone's going gonna, is, is gonna to see it. And then, yeah, you, you, if, if you're good at it, if you're not good at it, you will get better at it the more you practice. And then if you're good at it, someone's going to recognize that and then acknowledge that and they just give you an opportunity, I'm sure. So you just need to, uh, as Etienne told me once, I mean, just ask for the world because the world is going to give back to you. Excellent advice. Spot on. And hand in the mic, the mic back to your very dear Etienne. Um, it in in terms if somebody's watching this, I mean, I don't know why they would be still going. Well, will I see this film? Will I? I mean, we're going to see the film, but if you were to um give us your lasting um kind of pep talk to anybody who's still sitting in the things of whether they should go and see the difference between us, what would you say? Just just come and see the film and be part of an exciting growing industry in Scotland, you know, and um. There's always that thing that, that is always playing at the back of my mind is like, I know I have to start small to get big. I know in my, in my, my, my uh, I always say to people that I've got a five year plan of what I'm going to be filming or planning. And I've got plans ahead of what films I'm going to be making when I'll be blowing, blowing some things up, where I'll be doing car chases. I've seen all this in my head, right? 
right? So, so these people are the want to be like here. They want to say they were there when it all started. That's yeah. the thing. Be part of history in the making. Be part of history in the making. If you buy a ticket today, you're not just supporting me. You're supporting the film industry because that money will be reinvested in doing these films and looking after these actors and cast and crew so we can all grow together. Because I know everybody always says, oh, we want to do just a small film and put it online. And I said, no, I want to do an awesome movie. I have something to say, but make all the actors and everybody make a living out of it doing that. And that's why I worked tirelessly. There's so much of my story on how I made this film that I have not shared with the world, but I had to sacrifice and work hard, have conversations with myself on how I'm going to move on, how I'm going to solve that problem. There's always problems coming my way, but I've learned how to stay calm and find solutions. Look at every problem as a solution. So be part of this thing that is happening. Be part of history. And that's why you should buy a ticket. Buy a ticket and support him, him, her, everyone else and put Glasgow and Scotland on the map. Spot on. Absolutely. I'll be there with Bells on. I think I'm so excited to see this film. I'm so grateful to you all for your time and your energy. Um, well done. Congratulations to you all for being Thank part you. of what seems just Thank like you. the most wonderful project. Um, everything I've seen online, the trailer, like all looks like, oh, just mind-blowingly brilliant. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure people are very excited to, to see this film in its entirety. And uh, I just look forward to seeing what happens next to you all. Um, it seems like it's, it's only the beginning, like you said. Yep, just the beginning. Thank you so much, Lisa. Pleasure. All the best, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My whole life, I felt different. I thought that if I came here, I wouldn't stand out as much. Apparently, I still do. You don't have to hate. Just be you. Michael, meet our new roommate. Uh, no handshakes here, mate. Okay. You read newspapers? Yes. Man, what century are you from? What has happened to you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> 